For those of you that I haven't gotten a chance to meet, my name is Tristan Amati. I'm a solutions architect with the team. Uh, I'm not from Barcelona, just to clarify that. I was just coming back from a trip. I'm actually based in Los Angeles. Um, so uh, I've been here to Seattle a few times to meet with some of our customers. So um, definitely recognizing some faces as we, as we return here. And um, by now, we've probably uh, all recognized a certain theme to a lot of the uh, presentations that we've heard here today. The, the snappy, sort of fast, very responsive, high-speed nature of ClickHouse. And um, you know, we're speaking today uh, about a specific topic here under the assumption that a lot of people know what ClickHouse is, is and what it's good at. And that's being able to query large volumes of data right, with SQL. Um, that also allows us to be able to provide a certain degree of analytics on top of that as well. Um, this comes in the form of aggregations, right? Being able to query data focused specifically on uh, sort of targeted analysis, right? I want to pull back specific information, right? Filters. Um, I want to look at a specific period, a, amount of data over a specific period of time usually. Um, and this happens to be a very great capability for building real-time applications when you have you know, these large data sets like we're, we're talking about here today. And we often get asked at ClickHouse, you know, what is it that makes ClickHouse so fast? What's, what's the secret you know, to ClickHouse uh, as opposed to these other data stores? Because we recognize we are you know, in the midst of a lot of different um, you know, uh, availabilities of different options when it comes to storing your data. And, and the truth is there isn't really one silver bullet. ClickHouse has a lot of different um, tuning mechanisms to be able to improve performance specific to your data and what your scenario it is, you know, your, your use case. We have things like sort keys, projections, uh, dictionaries, uh, skip indexes. Uh, you've probably heard us mention things like bloom filters uh, in that regard. Uh, one of these is uh, what we refer to as materialized views. Um, and, and it's what can be used when out of the box performance isn't enough, right? You get help you get to that that next step, that next level um, to, uh, to your query response time requirements. Um, and it's probably one of the main tools uh, that we use to get to, get e to eke out right, better performance out of the data. Um, it enables you to be able to build a applications that are highly responsive, um, regardless of your data size. So I say applications, um, and that can come in a couple different flavors. Uh, by this, I mean internal applications as well as external, right, customer-facing applications, so like some of the ones that we're talking about here today. Um, whether they're web apps or mobile apps, these are the kind of applications and interfaces that allow us to apply filters, um, drill down, right, click on things to right, get additional contextual information about something that I find interested and want to want to dig down deeper into, um, issue searches, uh, and so forth. So again, the talk here is uh, building real-time applications with uh, ClickHouse materialized views. Um, and because we're talking about real-time views, let's, let's talk about it, um, it within more detail in, in terms of the requirements around them. So people who are building these real-time ap uh, applications, first off, fast query is incredibly important, right? Um, we're, we're talking about hundreds of billions of users in a lot of cases for, for these types of applications. It has to be snappy, and I, and I say this because you know, in 2024, we have been very much trained to expect a certain degree of responsiveness to the applications that, that we interact with. Right? I bet there are definitely some apps on your phone that you just know as soon as you open it, it's, it's going to be slow. We all know what those applications are. We've, we've, we've grown, and, and it's created a certain degree of bias uh, within us in terms of like you just always know when you use that whatever experience it is, whether it's a site, whether it's a mobile app, uh, you're going to get poor performance out of it. Uh, and if that repeats often enough, you're, uh, you're, you're either not going to come back uh, or it's going to limit your use of that tool because you'll find an alternative very quickly. So again, it's 2024. We're very much trained to expect a certain degree of uh, performance. If you're waiting more than a second or two, uh, you just immediately assume something's wrong. You know, uh, sorry, my have to enter my password. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, you you just immediately assume something's wrong, and by that I mean, well, you know, my connection must be bad, uh, the site must be down, a server must be down, or maybe I'm logged out. You just you don't expect to wait more than a second these days. So fast queries incredibly important. High concurrency is another one. 
Um, typically, we're working with customers who are supporting you know, uh, lots of users uh, at a time as well. So not just a high number of users, but high concurrency to those use, use cases as well. Um, variable filters, right? Um, being able to allow the capability to drill down on different elements to be able to uh, allow customers, users, to meet their needs. Um, so maybe they're looking at it over a period of time. Maybe they're applying faceted searches uh, to, their, uh, to their analysis as well. And they're typically aggregating, like I said, over a period of time. Time ranges are not very, they're not uncommon, um, but it's not the only way uh, that filters can be applied as well. A nice UI to top it off uh, is, another, is another element that can be incredibly important. So a lot of different requirements that we're looking at here. ClickHouse is fast and built for concurrency. It really checks the box on a lot of these things. Uh, but that said, there are, there are also always limits to this as well. Um, first off, uh, some queries just need to scan and summarize a lot of data, and you can't get around it. Um, so ideally, if I'm able to you know, add filters, look at a specific time period, uh, I can use a lot of built-in capabilities within ClickHouse to be able to jump straight to my data to uh, essentially, for lack of a better word, skip a lot of the data that I don't want to look at and go straight to the data that I do want uh, and provide really great performance. But again, there are some scenarios where I just have to scan everything. And uh, that is um, a situation where you don't have a filter to apply. You really need to be able to recall everything, uh, but you still want fast performance. This can be a situation where imagine if you're going to a dashboard and the landing page hasn't necessarily provided me an opportunity to select any filters yet. So that first view is showing me that sort of everything view, for lack of better words. Um, so in that case, it still needs to be snappy. I, I don't have the flexibility to be able to you know, have it get faster over time or eventually as more and more uh, filters are applied. Um, I, I expect equally fast performance um, from, from the moment the user lands, uh, lands on the landing page. And you can't optimize for every filter through uh, the ordering key. Um, what we mean by this is that not every permutation, not every uh, analysis pattern can be predicted. So we can't optimize for everything. Um, we try to address the most common access patterns or filters, uh, but we can't, we can't build against every, every uh, specific permutation. So one of the ways that we address this is uh, Materialized View. Again, we mentioned earlier there are a lot of different tools. Materialized View is, is one of them. It, it's uh, an approach, but not the only approach that, that can be applied. Uh, and this example that we're looking at on the right here um, is uh, an example where we have uh, information being pulled back from a full, uh, just a regular table. Right. This is not a Materialized View. We're looking at 3 billion uh, rows per second, which is pretty good. Uh, from a response perspective, but it's still 69 billion rows total. I don't know if it, everyone can see this. Um, that's 22 seconds uh, query response time. Uh, I wouldn't wait 22 seconds, just to give you an idea of my patience level. Like I would not uh, wait 22 seconds, nor would I return to this uh, application or system if it was consistently giving me that kind of a performance when I expect sort of blink of an eye uh, response time. Um, so we're going to actually take a look at a demo um, after this. But uh, what I want to start out uh, and look at first is, you know, what what is a materialized view? What within the context of ClickHouse, um, what does that look like? So really, a materialized view, unlike other systems that um, some of us have used in the past, is really just an insert trigger. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that looks like. A query in which a trigger it triggers on an insert into an original sort of source table. That query executes on the inserted block of rows. Uh, and then the results can be sent to, think of it like another table. So again, I'm just going to rephrase that. Uh, data is being inserted into a source table, a raw table. Uh, the query executes on that inserted block of records. right? So that batch of records that's coming in uh, is executed against a query. And then the results get sent to another. So it's sort of a th three-step approach. Again, we'll take a look at an, a real-world example of what that looks like. Um, but for now, just understand those three concepts. A materialized view doesn't actually store data itself. It's, it's more important to think of it as the processing against that uh, execution, that query, um, which is what's storing the, uh, the actual memory. Um, and it can be used uh, to summarize data uh, and massively improve performance. Essentially, what we're doing here is we're moving a lot of that work from insert time 
um, to query time by pre-calculating that result set so that at query time, we reap the benefits of uh, processing that has already been done. Essentially, we've paid that tax up front uh, in that regard. So again, let's take a look at a real world example. Um, just to frame some of the data that we're going to be working with here, we've taken uh, download data that's been collected from uh, PyPy, which is sort of uh, an analysis of all of the Python package data that has been downloaded. So essentially, every row, uh, every row uh, is representative of a download that was done of Python. Um, 600 billion rows in total. Um, and we're going to perform an analytics around. I think the total data set came out to about 100 terabytes. We looked at a cross section of a, a few months of that in total. And what we have here is a, a ClickHouse table, table on the left. Uh, it's looking at timestamp, uh, country codes, sort of where the download was coming from, and the project, the Python project. Uh, or repository um, as its own column as well. We've got a sort key defined for it. And this is our first record that's coming in. So this is an individual, as you can see, the three columns that we described. Um, this is the insert that's coming in. And based on that create statement, uh, on that create table statement, it was inserted into our PyPy table, which will be consistently sort of on the left here. So one record in, one record stored into that table. This then gets. Uh, We'll look at the materialized view first. So on the right here, what we're doing is looking at a materialized view created as PyPy downloads MV uh, to PyPy downloads uh, as a select statement from our source table, which is PyPy on the left. Um, and then it's grouping by project. So similar to what we were originally in inserting, but we're grouping by project so we can sort of summarize this data essentially. So that first record that was inserted, it is evaluated against the query, the materialized view, uh, which is based on that select statement that we're looking at, and then inserted into the materialized view, summarized, uh, which we see here. Sorry, my screen is a little bit behind. Uh, so again, on the left here, we've got the record that came in. On the right, we've got the same data, but summarized at the project level, which we see here. So. Another set of records comes in. This, this next record comes in, inserted to our source table, evaluated against the materialized view, and then added to the materialized view that we see here on the right. So far, this sounds pretty straightforward. But realistically, we don't get one record at a time. We end up getting several batches of records at a time. Uh, and then when these records all come in, they are added to the source table on the left evaluated against the query, consolidated into the group by statement, and then added to the materialized view. Um, so we can see here we've got BOTO3, uh, URLib3, uh, with one record for each. And additional records have been added based on this last batch that came in. So they get summarized in the materialized view on the right. Keep that going. We've got additional records that are coming in, it's going into our, source ta our main sort of staging table evaluated against the materialized view, and added, and so forth, as you can see here. So this was the final sort of summary of that cross-section that I mentioned. I think it was about three months. 65 billion rows um, got inserted into our main table. That's 14 terabytes. Uh, I could query this table on the left, or I could query the one on the right. I would get the same results, uh, as, that, as it were. Uh, but it compresses down to 10 megabytes in total. Um, 10 megabytes raw, and then into ClickHouse, 4 megabytes compressed. So you can see the difference here uh, in terms of what the materialized view is allowing us to, to look at. When we actually look at the performance of this, when querying the data, I don't have the actual data set loaded, but we have the results. Um, with no filter, looking at all time, uh, querying the data from the left table to get the same results that we have here. Uh, Let's see, this based on this select statement gave us the following results. So we were sorting by, um, by downloads. And it took 12 seconds uh, from the table on the left, which is not too bad, again, but we're, we're looking for sub-second performance. And um, when querying the same data from the table on the right, um, which is essentially the same, yeah, pretty much what we're seeing here sorted properly, it took 61 milliseconds. Once we add a filter, uh, it improves the performance a little bit. It was, um, we added a filter, and we did a cross-section by week. 
uh, and it took three seconds for the table on the left, um, and it took only 100 milliseconds for the table on the right. So you can see that this allows us the oppor opportunity to recognize uh, much improved performance because of that sorting, because of that, uh, that summarization of the data that's being done with the materialized view evaluation. Um, I wanted to show a quick demonstration of this as well. We have uh, a view of what this looks like in an interface that we have available. So this is a UI that we've created um, with Vercel uh, on top of the data that we've collected. Um, think of it like a dashboard. Think of it like a, a number of individual reports that are showing the summarized information. Um, and and it's, we can see here we, the recent releases, top repos that were downloaded, um, and um, some of the top information about those downloads on the bottom here. Um, and if I click on any one of these, I can get additional statistics and information about it. So this one's going to show me some high-level metrics, um, a summary of downloads over time, and um, histograms for downloads over time, top versions that are being downloaded. Uh, I won't go through every one of these, but you can see we've got bar charts, we've got um, uh, histograms and scatter plots, things like that. Uh, if there was anything additional I was interested in seeing, like for example, I wanted to pass a filter, um, I could click on China, for example, and then every one of these uh, reports will rerun with that filter. Um, so, you know, again, factoring in ClickHouse query response time, my network speed, and my browser rendering time, all of that's happening in, I would say, pretty much blink of an eye. So we can also pass a time filter in here as well. If I wanted to look at a specific point in time that looks like there was a spike, I'll, uh, I'll highlight that. We're passing a filter. Everything re-renders. Uh, and all of these are essentially ClickHouse uh, materialized views on the back end. Each, of these, each, of, each one of these charts that you're seeing are, is a different materialized view optimized for the information that I want to present in this specific example. Um, some of them are, um, could be based on the columns included, based on the information uh, potentially using the same materialized view. That's an option as well. Um, but in some cases where different columns need to be pulled back, um, we can store individual materialized views for each of them. And we can look at what each of the response times look like. So for example, we've created this interface to make it simple to interpret the query behind each one of these visualizations as well as uh, a live execution of it. So for this specific one, you can actually see the country code that, that was passed in here as well as the time period that was defined. If I run this, uh, we can see this one was a little over 100 milliseconds. Uh, and I see the same information that was presented on the slide before, on the screen before. Uh, let's take a look at another one. So for example, uh, let's remove that filter actually. I want to see the all data again, uh, just because that's going to give us the, I don't know, could be worst case scenario, I guess. Uh, let's remove the China filter. Uh, top contributors, you can see those names. Um, and let's go ahead and run this query. Uh, 60 milliseconds. So again, passing filters would, would um, improve it for this individual uh, view that we're looking at. But this gives you an idea of some of the ways that um, we are getting the best performance that we can for users who are accessing an interface. And again, this was done for analysis of a particular you know, piece of information that we're trying to get. But interpret this into uh, interfaces and tools that you use or tools that you are building and extending to other users um, to understand how it can be, you know, some of these tools can be applied in your case as well.